Hey everybody, this is Walter with Access Electric, and today I'm here with Jason Nab from Ecoflex, and we're going to talk about Title 24 here in California and how that affects what we have to do for lighting. So Jason, can you tell us a little bit about what is Title 24? So Title 24 started back in the, the 1970s and started evolving. The, the purpose of Title 24 is to try and maintain a certain amount of energy so we don't have to continue building power plants here in California. Energy is kind of hard to, to come by here without getting into more nuclear plants and so they're trying to eliminate those as we continue to increase our population here in California. So Title 24 has actually helped maintain a certain level of energy without having to build more plants even though we have had a huge significant increase in the population. Uh, so in 2005 they actually changed Title 24 to start including lighting controls into that uh, Title 24. In 2008, there was another change. Uh, from 20, 2008 to 2013, there was a significant change that really changed the way lighting controls were, were done in California. And since 2013, there's now we're in the 2016 version, and there's now the 2019 that's going to come out 2020, January 1st. Wow, that's coming up pretty quick. Yeah, very much so, yes. So Everybody's scrambling a little bit. They haven't finalized any of that yet. They're still working on it a little bit, but it's uh, it's getting closer, but it's still not 100% done yet. So I remember, uh, what year was it when there were significant changes? Uh, it was, it's been a while. It was the, the 2013 code, which went into effect July 1st of 2014. So that's when they started requiring dimming, they started requiring plug flow controls, that's really when the LEDs came into it and changed from fluorescence to LEDs. Uh, so there were quite a few changes that cost construction to go up quite a bit. Uh, and a lot of people were scrambling and then people started looking at the exceptions instead of just the rules. And that's when construction costs came back into the line a little bit. The added uh, manufacturing, you know, so the more you make, the less expensive things become. That also happened with LEDs. So LEDs came down in cost dimming came down significantly in cost because of those requirements. So even though there was an initial spike, those costs end up coming down, not completely back to where things were, but at least better in line with uh, where things used to be. So what are some of the requirements of Title 24? What are they requiring? So if I, if I go and, and develop a commercial, build out a commercial space, what are they gonna require me to do? Uh, so you have to have dimming in the majority of your lights. If you're under 100 square feet, or you're under 0.5 watts per square foot, you don't have to do dimming. Uh, but anything above 0.5 watts per square foot and above 100 square feet, you have to add dimming into that space. Uh, like I said before, most LED fixtures now are coming standard with dimming, so the cost of that has come down significantly. Our dimming controller is actually our cheapest controller now, our least expensive controller. So the cost of dimming from the control aspect has come down significantly as well. Uh, you have to have occupancy sensors in a lot of spaces now. There are some areas you know, under the 2016 code that do still allow you to have time controls, but 2019 is getting away from time controls and open office spaces from what I've seen. Uh, so then the majority of it's gonna be off sensor controls in offices, conference rooms, um, and quite a few other spaces, you have to have controlled receptacles, mm -hmm. which means you have to have at least a, one controlled receptacle within six feet of an uncontrolled receptacle so that you can turn off space heaters and task lighting and other things that people are, are plugging in. What they've found is they've brought down the energy consumption significantly with LEDs and, and adding in the controls, but there's still a lot of energy consumption at your plugs. Uh, so they've gone after HVAC controls, uh, which is a whole other subject, but they're also now trying to get you on the plug load controls to get that task lighting down and the, the space heaters down in usage as well when nobody needs space. And are they, are they going to require us to do the daylight, daylight harvesting as well? Daylight harvesting is definitely still sticking around in the 2019 code. Um, so you're going so to have to... So for those that, that don't know, what exactly? Explain what daylight harvesting is. So daylight is. harvesting is they're trying to maintain a certain light level. So as your natural light comes in, they lower the electric light output. So you're still maintaining, let's say, 35 foot candles on the task plane. So the, the end user sitting at the desk maintains the same amount of light over the entire day but you're using less of that electric light. Helps again, saving on the, the energy consumption during right. the day. Uh, what is different with Tile 24, which is the same in Washington, but basically nowhere else, is we have a primary daylight zone and a secondary daylight zone. Uh, everywhere else just has a primary daylight zone that does opt into daylight harvesting. So California and Washington are a little bit different that way, where you have two separate zones of daylighting and then a zone of non-daylighting. 
a lot of people ask, well, can I just put everything in the primary and then I don't have to worry about it if it's got everything dipped. And Title 24 doesn't allow for that. So the acceptance tester that has to come in after everything's done, commissioned, signed off, they have to actually come in and sign off on it as well. And part of their commissioning is are lights outside of that daylight zone being controlled by the daylight sensor? If the answer is yes, you failed your test. So the thought process is you're only dimming the lights, otherwise you're gonna to have to set that, ramp that daylight sensor setting up higher in order to get the right amount of light in the non-daylight zone. Okay, so just to clarify that, if we're doing a space, so if you're a customer and we're doing a space for you and we're installing Jason's Ecoflex lighting control devices in your space, when we're all done, a third party inspector needs to come in and do an acceptance test on how your lighting works and does it comply with Title 44. Uh, that, that confirms that, that we actually did comply with the law. Absolutely. Yeah, and that is something that's a little different from a lot of other areas where somebody else can just sign it off. The contractor who's in installing it can just sign it off. There are contractors who do have that acceptance testing ability in California but a lot of them have a third party person come in who's not associated to that project just to make sure that yes, this does actually comply. So California with the older codes before 2013 had controls requirements and the electrical inspectors were required to come in and verify that the space is met Title 24. And what they found that it was actually better to have somebody else come in who understood every little detail of the code and actually had a whole checklist that they had to sign off on uh, and made sure that people were meeting that. Very similar to the way LEED is nowadays as well. So summarize for us again exactly why we're, why we're having to comply with Title 24. Uh, so we have to have, in order to comply with Title 24, you have to have dimming, plug load control, you have to have occupancy sensing and daylight harvesting and demand response. I know we didn't talk cover demand response too much, but for those who don't know, demand response is something where the energy utility wants to be able to lower the energy consumption in a building at any given time. Mm. So I don't know if you're familiar with brownouts and blackouts. Uh, back in the day, we used to have grids that they would shut down in order to lower the consumption of energy at any given time. They're trying to reduce those by basically taking power from a whole bunch of areas and lowering the power down. So you have to be able to lower your lighting output by at least 15% through automatic demand response. Mm -hmm. So anytime PG&E or SMUD or MID or TID send a signal in saying, I want to take that power back or reduce the power of your building, they hit a button, everything automatically comes down by at least that 15% in order to not have to do those rolling blackouts or brownouts. So who do we have to thank for all uh, So unfortunately you have to thank the uh, California Energy Commission and our state legislature. So the state legislature has required uh, California Energy Commission to come up with a way to reduce the, or basically keep in line that same energy consumption. So their plan is to be any new construction building commercial by 2030 to be zero net energy or ZNE as they call it. Okay. What about remodels? I mean, the, it, it applies to remodels as well, doesn't it? It does. The remodels do have some ex some extra exemptions that they can get around certain things, like plug load controls don't have to be in every single remodel. It just depends on the extent of your remodel. If you're leaving in your utility, then you don't have to do plug load controls. Daylight harvesting does have some exemptions there as well. Demand response has a lot of exemptions for, for retrofits. So there are different things that you can get around with remodels versus new construction. Uh, so they don't have a date where they new construction, or sorry, retrofits have to be Z and E, but they are definitely saying uh, 2030 is the date for new construction on commercial side, 2020 for residential new construction. Okay, so we're gonna cut off this episode of Access to Power, but before we do, uh, we are gonna come back and we're gonna do a little demo of how to set up Ecoflex product. And, uh, and we'll, we'll save that for our next episode. In the meantime, I want to thank Jason uh, and Ecoflex for coming down here and telling us about Title 24 and putting on a demo for us. I want to thank Larry Swoboda with Swoboda Lighting uh, for putting this all together. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, subscribe to our channel. Until the next time, have a great day.